What really happened the final moments of Michael Brown's life? The Justice Department investigation makes it clear. The evidence does not support the mantra still being used by some protesters. Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Instead, the Department of Justice found that is, quote, inconsistent with the physical and forensic evidence. And in some cases, witnesses have acknowledged their initial accounts were untrue or witness accounts were not credible, including the witness closest to Brown when it happened, Brown's friend, Dorian Johnson, whose words helped spark the mantra. His weapon was already drawn when he got out the car. He shot again, and once my friend felt that shot, he turned around and he put his hands in the air and he started to get down, but the officer still approached with his weapon drawn and he fired several more shots. Attorney General Eric Holder supported the investigators' findings. Now, I recognize that the, the findings in our report may leave some to wonder how the department's findings can, can differ so sharply from some of the initial widely reported accounts of what transpired. America's justice system has always resist, res, uh, rested on its ability to deliver impartial results in precisely these types of difficult circumstances. Despite the evidence laid out by the Department of Justice that Michael Brown's hands were not up when Officer Wilson shot and killed him, the hands up, don't shoot movement lives. We know for a fact that he's dead. Whether his hands were up or not, he's, he's not here and uh, he didn't have a weapon. But the argument is that if he wasn't surrendering, then there's a justification, which is well, what the DOJ and the, and the grand jury to found. To me, that's a, a repetitive tactic that's been used against uh, black males when dealing with the police um, for the longest. Um, you, you can root back to slavery with that tactic, where you, you kind of, you have to find a way to uh, villainize the victim. But an attorney for Michael Brown's family points to witnesses in that same DOJ report who say Brown's hands were up briefly. There's a clear distinction between hands over your head and hands up. And so that's one clear distinction that we've seen already as we've reviewed the report. The head of the St. Louis Police Union says the refusal to believe all the details in the investigation is an example of why the community and police can't see eye to eye. The gulf of distress is as wide as it's ever been. It's not completely surprising. You know, uh, it's become so ingrained in, in these protests and in the minds of of people who believe that something uh, happened on August 9th that didn't. Hands up, don't shoot. Just today, a group of Ferguson protesters traveling to Selma still chanting the same mantra. But we did notice one difference. This time, their signs read, we can't stop now. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Ferguson, Missouri.